everyone. My name is Lee Bennett, and I think I probably know most of you, but I'm the owner of Amara Day Spa Salon and Boutique. Um, I'm a mom of four kids, the wife to Tyler Bennett, and we're here today to talk about some of the challenges and things that go into being an entrepreneur or growing a business and also being a mother. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so tell us a little bit about um, how you grew up, what your family dynamic was, and how it has changed like with your family now. Okay, for sure. So the way that I grew up, so um, I had a mother and a father. We grew up in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Um, I had four other siblings, so I had an older brother, um, then me, then two younger sisters, and then a, a baby brother. Um, my dad worked for the power company, um, had a really great stable job, but he worked out of town quite often, um, working on like power poles and, and all that good stuff. And then, so we were home often with my mom and she was a stay at home mom. Um, and so we grew up, you know, having her around and stuff. We, I mean, it's interesting because I think everybody has a story, but, um, growing up, we, my mom went through a lot of like mental illness challenges and stuff. My mom was like the most incredible, sweetest woman. Um, but so a lot of my childhood, was you know centered around a lot a lot of that and like treatment and to help her and my dad working a lot to help her and um and there were times that we were on you know uh, like church food or um i remember drinking like powdered milk and stuff like that because there were moments where you know way back then to get mental health help um insurance didn't cover it and stuff and so my mom and dad really worked hard to help navigate through you know the mental illnesses and stuff that she suffered through so um, at a young age, I really had this desire and passion to work. I always wanted more things and I don't know if it was cause I wanted more material things or because my friends had more or, you know, as I look back, I try to dissect like, you know, why did I want to work? But I started working when I was 14 years old. I would always try to work at home even for that to earn money. We would clean baseboards for like a dollar an hour and stuff like that. Um, and so I think that my dynamic growing up for whatever reason for myself, it really helped me to want to work, um, one, so that I could have, you know, have more. And I don't, I don't know that I'm like the most worldly person by any means, but it just seemed like there was more out there, like more that I could get. And then my dad was a really hard worker and my mom was an incredible um, figure as far as just helping me to, you know, become who I am as far as kindness to people and non-judgment and all those things and then my dad worked his butt off he's such a hard worker and so I think that growing up with all of those things Elsa helped to shape kind of all the different things that have helped me to become an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um but I had a good childhood even though there were challenges everybody has challenges um and so of course I still wanted to be a mom and you know so I grew up with kind of both things being a part of me which I probably didn't know they were a part of me but here we are. <laughs> and you said you always want to work, wanted to work and you always wanted to be a mom, but did you always want to be a business owner? Did you think that that was the way that you were? Oh ahead? gosh, no, 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 no. I don't think, I mean, I don't know. I guess a lot of kids, cause we talk to our kids a lot about business, the challenges, how to help grow their own business, about investments. They listen to talk radio with my husband. They listen to podcasts. Like we were in the car the other day and my son was saying, dad, turn on that podcast. Like let's find one that's good. And there was one talking about like, um, one of the presidents and then another one, you know, like he's really fascinated by like learning about business and politics and stuff. And he's 10 years old. Um, so I guess my kids grew up like that, but I didn't because my dad worked, um, you know, for the power company, he worked there for 35 years. It was go, you know, go to work, do the same thing. So I don't know that I grew up ever thinking I wanted to be a business owner at all. Even like the thing that sparked it was the salon I worked for was, you know, closing down or selling or they, you know, they were just trying to figure out what to do to get out of the industry because it's such a tough industry to own a business in. And that's where we started Amara. So it was really then that we decided to open a business, but a little bit more out of necessity than what I thought that like the dream would be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But And when you first started your business, what was like the biggest challenge for you? Starting as an esthetician, building a clientele or starting Amara? Starting Amara. Starting Amara. Um, I think the biggest challenge was just like 
figuring out how to do stuff on your own. Mm -hmm. And I think figuring out how to do it without having to get any um, capital from anybody else or bring in partners or, you know, but we were small enough that we just used our own money to start and we still have to this day used our own money to do every single thing that we do. So we take our money, invest it back into Amara, take our money and mm -hmm. invest it back into Amara. But that was probably the biggest challenge, just learning everything when we were small. Um, as we've as we've grown, our biggest challenge is um, employees. They're our greatest asset. They're our most amazing part of our company, but they're the they're the hardest challenge now. But in the beginning, it was that. Just we were so small that we mm -hmm. didn't really have employees, so it was just learning how to run a business and get enough money and mm -hmm. you know all that stuff. And how could you tell when like you were going every time you expanded? Like how did you like, how could you tell that it was time to expand? You know, when you went from like basement to, to a little bit of a bigger basement to here to expanding here to opening Lehigh and then getting cool sculpting and now um, the vampire facial and PRP hair restoration. Do you know if you ask me and if you ask my husband Tyler, we'd probably both have different answers. So much of how I run and operate is based on like intuition and gut and feeling of just like this is the next step that we need to take before I ever look at data. Um, and then the greatest strength is that Tyler can look at data and say like, yeah, like this seems to make sense. But I think as a business owner, you have to be willing to take so many risks and have so much faith in things because before you expand, you don't know if it's going to work out before you invest in, you know, half a million dollar cool sculpting machines. You don't know that you're even going to be a successful practice cool sculpting or PRP that we just launched this week no idea if it's going to be successful. It's just an incredible service that I think that we could offer to our guests to help them. And, and that's how we know. And then we figure out, you know, how to make the funds work. And we're really smart business owners when it comes to money, but it's not always like a, like wait till you get all the data because sometimes you lose the opportunity to expand or grow services. If you wait for too long to make sure it's going to work. So mm -hmm. all faith and all <laughs> like, I think I can make it work. Right. So, and then going back to being a mom when you first started tomorrow, were you a mom already or? I was not a mom already. I had just gotten married. So we opened Amara, um, in like January of 2005, I think is when we first started taking our first guest there. And I had just gotten married in, um, what is, when did we get married? You guys may, may of 2004. <laughs> so like not even a year before that. Um, so we weren't parents yet. Um, I don't think we were even thinking too heavily about being parents that soon because, you know, we were both 24 years old. We were so young. We had just gotten married. Um, but we did become parents not very far after that because, you know, I would talk to guests all day and so many of them would have problems with getting pregnant or they'd have to take Clomid or do in vitro. And so I just said, babe, it's going to take us like five years to get pregnant. We better get off birth control. Um, because I just know it, like everybody can't get pregnant and we were pregnant pretty soon. So we had our first child when we were 26 years old. So we were married for two years before we had our first kid. So Amara was only, Amara was like a year and four months in. Mm -hmm. So I got pregnant, you know, like six months after we opened our first little basement, Amara. And so. how did you handle having a little baby and starting <laughs> a business? Do you know what? So at that time it was me and my amazing sister, Tessa, who I think most of you know, she still works for us. Um, and then we had a massage therapist in there in our basement. And I, I don't know. I think that no matter what you do or what you're given, you figure out how to navigate it. Cause again, it wasn't like I didn't pre think, how am I going to do this? It was just, Oh, this is what's happening. This is, we're just going to do it. So I remember throwing up with clients, getting a facial and saying, hold on and throwing up and coming right back to them and then being super understanding about that to when, you know, I had my baby and like, I don't really take work off if I'm sick unless I'm uber sick or, you know, for other challenges. But, you know, the few times that you have to stay home with your baby and, you know, clients being really understanding. But um, I think one of the biggest things was I tried really hard to find good child care. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's some advice that I would give for any working mom. I think some of the things that I see that stress a lot of people out, even my own um, coworkers here, women, I mean, we employ all women, the only male at our company is my husband. Um, and this isn't even his day job. So seeing these moms like struggle with daycare and like trying to, you know, have 
all these different people watch their kids or maybe it's not the right person or or maybe they can't afford daycare yet and so they're trying to utilize free daycare but from the beginning we paid for our daycare and I think that that was huge because then I could have expectations from the provider that was caring for my child um, and it didn't feel like well I can't ask them to do that because I you know I'm not paying them or they call in sick all the time but I can't really say anything because they're watching them for free I think that helped a lot um, although of course I wished I had free daycare that would be amazing right. um, but I just didn't have the luxury of that my mom passed away actually shortly after we opened um, Amara and um, you know my husband's mom worked and stuff so we just like we didn't have those luxuries it's a great thing for anyone that mm -hmm. does that I think it's cool I would have loved that but I think looking back now um, the advice would be make sure your child care one you love them and you know they love your kids and that it's a safe environment but two sometimes paying people holds it to a higher level so that you can accomplish what you need to at work serve whatever purpose it is that you know whatever company you're starting or, or job that you have whether it's not your company or it is that if your kids are taken care of you can work more effectively for sure and now how many kids do you have I have four kids so I have an 11 year old daughter um, I have a 10 year old son a 7 year old daughter and a 4 year old boy yeah. so and how do you balance work and and um, all of them and their extracurricular activities and like a social life and being healthy <laughs> and yeah. all the things all that everybody the things you don't everybody sleep, has to do though. I guess yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's a limited amount of sleep. Any parent that's watching this, like, you probably giggle because you're like, yep, I think sleep goes a little bit out the window and you just accustom to that and get used to that. Um, but I think, I think over the years, um, to be able to handle it, I think I've done away with the word balance. Like, what's the perception of balance, right? Like, I don't think that life is ever balanced. And I think as you hear me talk about this, you're going to say, oh, yeah, like, Maybe there's something to that, but you know, like there's always things that come up in your day, whether you are a stay at home mom or you work, there's always things that come up in your business that unbalance things, right? And so no matter how hard you try to keep a perfect family work-life balance, you're gonna just keep trying and trying and feeling like you're failing because balance to me isn't really out there where it's like, I'm only gonna ever work 40 hours and I'm gonna spend all the rest of the time with my kids and I'm gonna do this because life is just life and there's things, there's tragedies that happen, there's work emergencies, there's family emergencies, there's regular days that you think that went perfect, everything went as I planned. Um, and so I don't really count on any kind of work-life balance. What I try to do instead is be 100% present wherever I'm at. So if I'm at work, I'm at work, Everybody knows it, my family, my amazing nanny who we've had for 10 years, my husband, they know that if I don't answer, that I'm just unavailable, and unless it's an emergency, that they have other resources to go to, like nanny or dad or whatever it is, right? Because if it's not an emergency, they don't need me. Now, flip side, when I get home, and I think all of my coworkers would attest to this, I don't answer my phone. I don't go home and email all night long while I'm present with my kids. I now spend the time to be with my kids. So. You know, this week I've worked uh, more hours than was planned, but I managed to find small amounts of time where I could spend one-on-one -on -one time with my kids doing something that they wanted to do or that they needed to do. So there was homework with some kids, there was kids that didn't have it so then I could just read to them or play a game with them. And I think I recognized with my kids that um, they, they really get quality time with both me and my husband. My husband manages to be the coach. My kids are on competitive softball teams, baseball teams. They play basketball, dance, tumbling, piano. Like, it sounds like we're a madhouse, but um, I think that our kids are really excelling because they have parental support, coaching support. We show up to their games, but we also go to work. They know that we have work. They know, they know our schedule, and if something comes up, they know that their nanny's there to take care of them or dad is going to come home or it's mom's turn. So I don't know, like that kind of answered a big long question, sorry yeah. Elsa, but yeah, I think that to go back to what you're asking, like how do you balance it? I don't try to. Quality time wherever I'm at. And you talked about your husband. How important do you think he is in helping you juggle family and work and everything else? <laughs> like super uber important for me because he so my husband Tyler also owns and runs operates a couple of his own companies as well um, so we're a multi-company family um, multi employees different facets he lives in the world of real estate and finance and his companies are centered around that and this company is completely opposite but his role is super vital because one 
he were you know parents so we co-parent the business of operating our family um and then he has the finance and and all of the background to you know operations and finance for this company and so he's really vital in all of the roles but um, I think that it works for us because we really partner back and forth. But I was reading some articles last night about a ton of like single mom entrepreneurs as well. And I love to read and I love to like listen to different audio books or starting to get into podcasts and stuff like that. But it was really fascinating learning about all these single moms that are entrepreneurs too that do it. And, and they find a way and their kids aren't messed up and they found a way to do away with the guilt and stuff. So I think my husband is very vital in what we do, but... Could I do it if I had to all by myself? Not that I would ever wish that. I think we would still find a way, you know? Right. And um, when you talked about uh, finding a way, so 17% of um, businesses that are founded are founded by women. So is there any, like, what do you think is the reason why the number is so low? And how do you think that, like, we can bring it up? That's a fascinating number. I didn't even know that number. Yeah. I knew it. I mean, I knew that, you know, it was more of a predominantly male entrepreneurship thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, I think that no matter what, men, women, whoever you are aside, age, like, I just think none of it matters. I think, I really do think that anything's possible. And you see all these people that have ideas and move them forward. But as you do read books or listen to things like, you know, I, I just listened to the, um, Phil Knight. He founded Nike, but you listen to his story. It wasn't always Nike. So you just have to be willing to like put forth the effort, I think as women and know that you can do it know that if you've got something that you think is valid, a valid business to start, that it's possible. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be crying. There's going to be moments where you don't think you can do it. There's going to be moments like there have been many moments where I just want to sell Amara because it's too hard or it's too emotional or, you know, the employees are stirring up drama or whatever it is. And I think this isn't worth it. Why do I do this? You know, and you just have to be willing to know that you're going to go through those and then you're going to get out of it and you're going to go through it and get out of it as long as you let yourself get out of it and don't just quit. And so I think that that's a way that we could get, you know, more women entrepreneurs or women in the workforce um, if they want to be, if they don't want to be great. But if, if there's a lot of you out there that like yearn for more than what you're currently doing and you need a hobby or career as something, it's okay to do things for yourself. And I think that that's what I've realized is a lot of this is for me. Like I'm really passionate about this industry. And so for me, I get a lot of my energy to go back and give to my kids because of the amazing things that I get to do at work and the amazing people I work around and the amazing services that we have to offer to our clients and and helping our guests feel amazing and all those things. I get energy from that. So for me, that's almost like someone doing yoga for themselves or, you know, going on vacations all the time because that's their outlet. Like, so if you have something that you need to do, don't feel guilty about being a mom and going to the gym if you need it, being a mom and having a business or working or all of those things. And I think that that would also help up it is getting rid of the guilt factor um, and just being and doing and loving and being kind and growing something that's beautiful and ethical and great. Like if that's what you're doing, then I don't see how it could go wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you shouldn't do what you want to do in life. So I once heard this quote, I think I'll probably butcher it, but it talked about how you can't take care of other people unless you're taking care of yourself. Oh, totally. So, like, you can try to put everyone else first, but eventually you'll get to the point where you're, you know, you need care yourself. So if you take it, then you're more likely to keep giving that constant care for everybody else. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's so well said, and it's a quote everybody's heard time and time again. You hear it on the airplane about the mask, take care of yourself first before you take care of someone else, and... If you don't, you can't be your best self. You can't, if you feel good about yourself, that's what you present. And um, I feel like, you know, when I feel good about myself and I feel like I'm an empowered mother and an empowered businesswoman or feel like I'm contributing to society, I feel like I can do big things and I can impact more people than if I am just at home all alone by myself wishing that I could do something or do more but feel guilty about doing it or, you know, taking care of myself and, you know, going to the gym and, you know, both me and my husband work out every day. And like people ask questions all the time, like, how do you do that all? And I'm sure they must think that we neglect something here or there. And I mean, we all only have 24 hours, so some things get neglected, right? But 
we try to not neglect our kids as much as possible, not neglect ourselves, not neglect our businesses. And maybe we don't have like go out with our friends every night, you know, in this phase of life, but we're choosing not to right now, even though we love them, want to see them all the time, but we can't go out seven days a week with friends and be social. So we try to do that when we can. And, you know, we just, everyone has to figure out where they spend their time and what makes them the happiest and, and understand their seasons in life where you just do different things too. And what is your biggest advice to someone who has a great idea for, for a business or wants to start their own business um, and doesn't really know where to start? Well, I think the magical thing about nowadays that you have tools for that we used to not have tools for right way back when is you can research and listen to books and read books and you can research online. You could Google search or ask Siri or my kids ask Alexa everything like you can you can find out so much about starting a business, how other people started businesses. Um, you can copy great ideas. I think if someone's already doing something, the smartest advice is copy them. If it's working and it's a field that you want to go into, copy them. Like they're doing something right. Why would you try to go reinvent the wheel as much as possible? Um, and and then just like do it. Don't keep saying I wish because wishes don't ever come true unless you put action into play. That's true. So. Well, thanks, Lee. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you're wearing with your little wearing, oh. cute little... <laughs> <laughs> my little jacket. Yeah. <laughs> of my favorite new service that we brought on. Yeah, so um, so Cool Sculpting is something that we brought into our business. Um, it's been about eight months now. We brought it in the 1st of July in 2017. And when we talk about bringing on new things, um, this is something that was a pretty large investment. Um, we bought two Cool Sculpting machines. Um, they're very, very expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and um, but it's such a neat procedure and it's something that we first saw. One of our goals is to continue to um, help our business to have a little bit more well-roundedness with like hair spa and med spa instead of med spa just being like a little side thing. And so over the last year and a half, we've worked really hard to be put more on the map for that. And it's crazy. Like cool sculpting has helped change people's thought processes about themselves, their confidence, their appearance, like I'm back doing services, which is something I absolutely love doing is just interacting with the guests and seeing how I can help them. Um, and so that's what my jacket is. So I am either in scrubs or this jacket most days now so that we can promote cool sculpting so that people know that they can ask questions to us that are in the jackets or the scrubs. And so of course I wore it for the interview so that I could help promote it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. <laughs> You're welcome.